we have, if you're counting, one bracket to go. And this is where we thought we'd see the most intrigue at the top. Weeks ago, we have all sat here at various points and said, what would happen? Could Baylor unseed Louisville as one of those top seeds if they make a run? We saw Louisville upset in the ACC championship. We saw Baylor make a run and then upset today by Texas. So your one seed and final bracket in the Wichita region is, wait for it, wait for it, Louisville. Louisville remains the top seed. They will face, I hear some groans. You see like the, the, the juxtaposition of the celebrations. You hear <laughs> cheers and groans. Uh, so Louisville will, will face Albany, the America East champion. That's your 116 matchup there. And remember that this Louisville team, while they lost in the semifinal of the ACC tournament to Miami, this is the same team that a week before looked unbeatable in their game against Notre Dame. Absolutely fair. So again, the committee not deciding to punish them for losing in the ACC championship. They remain a one seed in that Wichita region. Let's get you your 8-9 matchup in Wichita. It's Nebraska getting their 15th NCAA tournament appearance. They are going to face Gonzaga, your WCC champion. We've got the reaction from Nebraska. It looks like moving pictures. And you, Gonzaga, again, another team that shoots the three. You've got the Trong sisters and you have Sierra Walker knocking down the threes. So there it is, your 8-9 matchup. I feel like Texas had better Wi-Fi than Nebraska had, but that's nonetheless. As we continue through the Wichita region, let's get you your 413 matchup. Number four, Tennessee, making their 40th NCAA tournament appearance, most in D1. They will face number 13, Buffalo, the MAC champion, making their fourth NCAA tournament More kids tournament jumping up appearance. and down, more kids. I love the kids jumping up and down. Return of the MAC if you will. I don't think that's jumping up and down. They, that's the gritty. Are they doing the gritty? I can never tell. No, no, no. The kid in the previous one. Oh, okay. He's doing the gritty. <laughs> they can hear us. Maybe we can just ask them to do. Just start calling out dances that you want yeah, to see them about do. Yeah. Can you teach me how to duggy? Let's move on through the Wichita region. We've got your 5-12 matchup, and it will be number five, Oregon, taking on your OVC champion, Belmont. Pac-12 at large for Oregon, 4-0 in their first round days under Kelly Gray's rookie. Well, as you know, this time of year, it's all about the guard play, and Oregon's mm -hmm. guard play with Rodgers and Pow Pow has allowed them to get to this point. So, again, you mentioned 4-0 in first round games under Coach Kelly Gray's. But don't forget about Belmont. They won their first NCAA tournament game just last year by defeating five-seed Gonzaga, so they certainly know how to pull an upset. We continue through the Wichita region. This is the bottom of the bracket. Your 314 matchup pits Michigan against number 14 American, the Patriot League champion. So there is Michigan. Nas Hillman, 14 double doubles this season, and their 22 and 6 record, best record in the last 20 seasons. And you see American third NCAA tournament appearance. Patriot League teams 1 and 28 all time in the tournament. So they've got a bit of a challenge, but they look like they are up for it. So that your 314 matchup in the Wichita region. Let's get you to your number 611 matchup. And that's BYU facing number 11 Villanova. 15th NCAA tournament appearance for the Cougs. They won the West Coast Conference regular season title, but Villanova won 15 of their last 17 games as we enter the tournament. And you see the reaction there from Villanova. They are feeling it. They are streaking at potentially the right time. We'll get onto all that, but there you go, ladies. Yep. We can't believe it. We can. Congratulations. You will, in fact, be dancing. Four more teams. Are you ready? Before we close out the official reveal, number two seed Baylor will be taking on 15 Hawaii. Of course, we mentioned Baylor. Would they be able to upend Louisville for that top seed? They don't, but they stay a two seed in the Wichita region. Don't you think the Baylor Bears are going to be motivated uh, now? Yes. <laughs> they lost that game in the Big 12 championship. Now, Alyssa Smith, she got hurt in that second quarter. She'll be back full strength by the time next week's get started. Melissa Smith, your Big 12 player of the year. Hawaii, your big West champion, so congratulations. And here we go, your 7-10 matchup. The final game in the Wichita region, that's number seven, Ole Miss taking on South Dakota. 
who won the Summit League. So Ole Miss, 18th NCAA tournament. Austin leading the team in scoring and rebounding. And South Dakota, the Summit League champs, their fourth tournament appearance, third straight. Chloe Lamb in the Summit League Player of the Year. So that your 7-10 matchup as again, we show you all 16 matchups in the Wichita bracket. We have now officially revealed every single bracket in the NCAA's women's tournament. Before we get to a bigger picture, I want to stay there with the Wichita region. I'll start there with you, CP. What stands out to you when you take a look at this bracket? I'll go back to Baylor because Baylor was playing unbelievable basketball mm -hmm. uh, all the way to the finals until Melissa Smith went out. And this is a team that has a potential number one WNBA draft pick and they also have three-point shooters around her. So they're going to be a tough matchup. They get out in transition. Nikki Collin has brought a pro style, a lot of ball screen action inside and out, and they defend. That's going to be a tough team to face. Nikki Collins' first year there, fantastic run for her. Give me a team that can give us a little chaos here in this bracket, Rebecca. One of the teams that is always very difficult to play against is Villanova. First of all, they're not afraid of the moment. We saw that a couple of weeks ago when they beat UConn in Hartford. And they also have Maddie Segrist, who's second in the nation in scoring. They play a very difficult style to defend. Uh, that's a team to keep an eye on. What's sticking out to you in this region? Kentucky. Um, they're a hot team right now. Kentucky has a lot of potential um, going down the stretch. And when you're talking about an overall number one pick, Ryan Howard for the WNBA has been in that conversation. And the fact that they had a great victory over South Carolina and they've went on a 10-0 streak. They haven't lost in 10 straight games. So Kentucky is a hot team to watch.